There are currently no Etsy listings for ADA compliant braille gifts. No Christmas ornaments, no key dishes, keychains, none of the usual suspects. Today I'm going to do my best to 3D print the Mona Lisa in ADA compliant braille and I'm also going to create this really cool walnut picture frame using a very simple double-sided carved technique. But first, let's talk about the quill. The brand new Quill Touch Braille printer is the easiest, quickest, and most affordable way to provide perfect ADA compliant braille. It deposits a small amount of resin and creates a perfectly spherical ball through the natural surface tension of liquid resin. It features a touchscreen display allowing for precise adjustments for dot consistency and an onboard CPU that enables incredibly fast printing speeds. Up until now, the process of making braille signs required drilling holes and inserting braille dots by hand using a specialized tool. It's a very tedious process. But now ADA compliant braille can easily be printed on a variety of materials and mounted onto any brand CNC router. The resin comes in a few colors, clear, black, white, and silver, but you can also get custom colors available on request. If you mess up, wipe away the resin and print again. Once the printing is done, the resin can be cured using a UV flashlight, creating a highly durable product that is going to stand up to people messing around with it, touching it, that kind of stuff. There are a variety of ways to mount your quill to your CNC machine, and that really depends on the type of machine that you have. I created these bolt-on acrylic mounts that use the quill storage sliders that seat perfectly into it for alignment. It also easily removes from the machine. But as a kit, it kind of comes with everything you need to mount to your machine. The Quill Touch comes with an expandable length cable that you can easily integrate into your drag chains. It also comes with two clear resin cartridges, each capable of printing 5,000 dots, which we will be putting to the test later, and a high-powered UV curing flashlight. Also, it does come with a clearance gauge that helps you figure out how much resin is left in your capsules, but also how far away your material is when you're first setting up the quill. It's really helpful. And it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and a one-year warranty for those who are interested in purchasing this. If you are, please use the link down below. It directly supports the channel. Thank you very much. When I cut out these acrylic mounts, I also went ahead and cut out a few of these five by seven panes. And I figured that I would go ahead and print on these a little bit so that I could understand how the printer works and see how everything was going to work together so that I could take on the large Mona Lisa picture. And instead of going out and buying a picture frame, I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to show off a simple double-sided carve and we could just make our own. So here's the fast and easy way to do a double-sided carve. First, set up a fence using common width material to keep everything aligned to your machine. For this, I'm just using two pieces of MDF strips, making sure that it creates a 90 degree angle. Then simply place your wood into the corner. This walnut in particular is 11 and a quarter by nine and a quarter, which is the exact size of material that we need for this picture frame. For this carve, we're going to be cutting out the back first. So we're gonna be using double-sided tape on the quote unquote front to secure everything to the wasteboard. We're carving out the entire back of this with just one bit. We're gonna be using the downtown Jenny. And the most important thing to understand here is that we are going to be setting up our origin in the center of our material, both for the back and the front. It's gonna make things easier as we're flipping things around. This cut out fast and left us with an area that we can put our five by seven glass panes in, which means that you can easily take some picture frames that you already have around the house, just steal the glass out of that. <laughs> This also can be scaled larger if you want to, to make it eight by 10 or even smaller if you wish. Next, we flip over the material so that we can start carving the front. Some of y'all might've noticed that I didn't pull off the film off the double-sided tape. And let me tell you, I didn't notice until this thing was done. As it was cutting, it was moving around a little bit and I just kept on being so confused, but everything cut out fine. It really didn't cause any type of an issue. We use the bulk up bit to cut out two areas to give us a little bit of dimension to the piece and then the 60 degree groovy Jenny to do all these fun little details, giving the frame a cool 3D look. Next, I put on some finish and did some sanding. Uh, I used a nylon brush in my drill to clean everything up as far as any fuzzies that were left over from the V-bit carving. And all that was left to do after that was just to finish it with some spray lacquer. Now that we have our frame all cut out and looking nice, let's go ahead and try and print some dots because this process at first seemed very, very confusing, but after the first time, it's as simple as can be. Setup was much easier than I first anticipated. Simply slide the quill touch onto its mounting point and then power on the machine. What that actually means is you're gonna have this piece attached to your machine and then this piece actually just goes on top. When there's power on the machine, it means that when you press upwards on it, it is going to deposit a very small amount of resin. 
The screen will show its standard settings and they all work perfectly for me out of the box. Any adjustments needed are normally going to be for changes in the atmospheric pressure due to weather or altitude. So in layman's terms, if you're high up in the mountains, you might need to plus or minus things in order to get the perfectly spherical dot that you're looking for. But for me here in Atlanta, Georgia, it worked perfectly out of the box. The screen is very intuitive and you can actually swipe over and it'll give you some prompts for some helpful tips on getting things set up. After making contact with the material and plunging out about an eighth of an inch, it deposits a small amount of resin. Just make sure that you don't wipe off the resin from the very tip as it needs a small amount for the surface tension depositing to actually work properly. Zero your Z height off of the plunger, just like you would with a regular bit. And then zero your X and Y off of the resin tip. I had immediate success creating a drilling toolpath, setting the depth at an eighth of an inch so that it would deposit the resin dot. If for some reason you're creating intricate designs like me, make sure that your program is set up to drill from left to right. Thankfully, Carveco made this really easy, but obviously if you have your drilling sequence set up to be optimized with your machine for time, it's going to be jumping around a whole lot and that optimization might end up squashing all of your dots that you've already printed. So printing from left to right means that you're not going to be squashing the dots that you've already laid down. As you can see right here, I printed this very simple tree in white resin and I painted the back of the acrylic black to give it some depth. The resin printed perfectly, all the dots are exactly the same and I'm trying to get it off with my finger now, none of it's budging. The only thing that I am worried about are just all the smudges that it's gonna get from people touching this. This is a five by seven piece, which is meant to be able to line up with any five by seven piece of glass that you have for your picture frames to go into your frame like this and there you go. You can permanently mount it in place and then hang it on the wall. Next up is the Mona Lisa. And this is the main reason that I personally wanted to get this, to be able to show off weird capabilities of this. I think it's very easy to see that it's very good at printing braille, very durable, good ADA compliant braille. But the thing that I saw in this was going to be pointillism, the way to be able to create artwork using small dots and then far away you see an image, the closer you get to it, it starts going away. And I thought that it would be so cool to be able to make the Mona Lisa out of ADA compliant Braille. First, I turned the image of the Mona Lisa into Braille using a cool tool that I found online. I'll have it linked in the description of this video. It's free and very easy to use. Next, I turned that Braille image into vectors using CarveCo and assigned my drilling paths. I wanted to test and see if the resin cartridges actually would do 5,000 dots. So I created this design painstakingly to figure out how to get it underneath 5,000 dots and we ended up exactly at 4,835. I felt like that if it did that many, it was actually living up to its claim, so we stopped there. I loaded in my only black resin cartridge and let it do its thing. About an hour and a half later, I was left with this. The Mona Lisa in Braille. Can you see it? <laughs> I can, when I'm like super far across the room, it's perfect and then the closer you get, it goes away. All of these dots are configured to be able to have specific characters and then each of these characters are compiled to be able to create the image. Remember when you were a kid and you saw those big posters that were made up of a thousand different images, some of those images were repeating in order to give the picture of like the woods or a wolf or, or whatever it is. That's exactly what's happening here, but just with braille and the pointillism art style. I can't tell you how excited I am that it actually worked out, and more so that we got through all of this with a single cartridge on the quill. If anybody's wondering, this is around seven and a half inches wide and a little bit over 11 inches tall, and then I put it on a piece of Lexan, painted the back of that white, and then just put it in this very gaudy frame, and it is now gonna be hanging here in the wood shop. Today, this frame right here is this week's project. It comes in Carveco, Vectric, DXF, and SVG, and it is our very first project where we did a double-sided carve. This piece right here is actually being sent off to Jack, the owner of Quill ADA, because I am very thankful for him sending out this unit to me. I really do appreciate it. If y'all are interested in the Quill ADA, please use the link down below. It does support the channel. Otherwise, I will see y'all next Friday. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.